Today, an even clearer picture is emerging of how the twice impeached ex-president sought to exploit the office of the presidency for his personal financial gain. NBC News has obtained receipts showing Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Qatar, Turkey, China, and Malaysia spent hundreds of thousands of dollars at the Trump International Hotel in Washington. At the very same time, they were seeking to influence U.S. foreign policy in their favor. This is according to investigative findings released by the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Committee Chair Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney saying in a letter this, quote, these documents sharply call into question the extent to which President Trump was guided by his personal financial interest while in office rather than the best interests of the American people. Joining us now, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney of New York. Congresswoman, it's great to see you. Your, your committee is literally producing the receipts of the depth of the corruption of the Trump presidency. Take me through this latest um, disclosure. Well, our, our, our committee uh, determined that uh, based on documents that we've been trying to get for three years, we finally got them uh, with uh, court decisions and an agreement, and we started receiving them in September. But these documents uh, show that six different uh, foreign countries uh, spent well over $750,000 in the, the Trump D.C. hotel uh, during times when very serious uh, and sensitive uh, foreign policy issues were being discussed while they were visiting with the president. Uh, this was uh, coming to his hotel. It showed that uh, some of the, the rooms, one, the rooms, uh, the most expensive room was ten thousand over ten thousand dollars, and they were renting ten thousand dollar rooms. Uh, so uh, we are we are concerned. It raises very serious issues. Uh, our committee's uh, findings raise. Uh, concern about the extent that foreign governments are trying to influence foreign policy through contributions to financial interests of uh, President Trump. Uh, and we need to know whether he was serving the people's interests or, or his own personal financial interests. So today we sent a letter to the archivist uh, requesting the presidential records around all of these incidents and really information about any foreign spending uh, in Trump businesses during his presidency. Do you have any concerns that some of the documents the committee is seeking and its multiple investigations are among the documents that he's got tied up in the criminal investigation into the documents at Mar-a-Lago? Well, that's a very serious uh, concern. We are still con concerned about uh, those documents, and we're still uh, uh, looking for them. We're still trying to get a full accounting. Uh, we have not uh, gotten a full accounting or any certification that we have all of the documents. There are always rumors that there are certain places. Uh, we are following up uh, with subpoenas and, and with other efforts to get those documents. Uh, let me read a little bit more of what the committee's investigation <clears throat> has revealed, what's in public now. Um, the Saudi Ministry of Defense spent $85,961 during a one-week stay in March. That's those $10,000 suites you're talking about, renting several of them. It's according to the committee findings. The Saudi revenues for the Trump Hotel came during a period when Saudi Arabia and the UAE were lobbying the Trump administration to support them during their blockade against their economic rival, Qatar. For their part, Qatari officials and connected companies spent at least $307,941 at the Trump Hotel from late 2017 through mid-2018, according to the Oversight Committee's findings. Um, are you able to assess whether it was a get in the door kind of thing to stay at his hotels, that that was just part of the package of coming in to meet with Jared Kushner or Donald Trump or whomever they were trying to influence, or whether it was something that he actually required of them? Well, that's why we're, just, we're looking at all communications between uh, the president and the president's offices and these foreign countries. And, and uh, that's what our letter asked for, for more documentation. We did get the, the uh, this is the first time we've gotten actual numbers about foreign expenditures in, in, his, in his businesses. And what we're looking at is ways to prevent this in the future, to, to uh, remove any influence of money, especially from foreign uh, governments. It's against the law. The Emoluments Clause says you cannot take any money from any foreign uh, government. So uh, I, I personally believe that presidents should not be conducting business uh, while they're in the White House. They should be just conducting the people's business and not running their own private firms. But we're looking at ways to strengthen the Conflicts of Interest Clause to make sure that this uh, this this 
conflict doesn't happen in the future. Congresswoman, are any of the Republicans on the committee um, helping you with these investigations? Or are they not interested in solving that question you just laid out? They have not participated in, in these investigations. They have participated in other reforms that we passed uh, for the post office, uh, uh, making monumental reforms and in, in, uh, in preserving uh, the ability of the post office to serve the people in the future. And also with the Veterans uh, Associate, uh, uh, it, it, the Vet Veterans Administration, we worked in a bipartisan way there, uh, helping the veterans, uh, modernizing the processing of their claims. So there are one, some areas where we do uh, work together. They are, are not supportive of our investigations into Mr. Trump.